Hey everybody, welcome back to www.itvideocoach.com. Bill Grossmore here, nice to have you guys back. We're looking at a video series right here, a two-part series on how to create a Microsoft PKI hierarchy. In part one of two, we're going to show you how to install a Microsoft standalone root CA. You can find all my videos under the YouTube tag Grizzamore, that's G-R-I-Z-Z-A-M-O-R-E. You can also find my videos on my website. Just go to www.itvideocoach.com for higher quality downloads. Be sure to check it out. Hey everybody, welcome to www.itvideocoach.com. Bill Grismore here. Nice to have you guys aboard. We're taking a look in this video presentation how to install a PKI infrastructure. This is part one of a two-part series on how to actually set up the standalone root CA and the enterprise subordinate which is actually the Microsoft recommended best practice and for good reason. So let's go ahead and dive in and take a look at part one. The first thing we need to do is to establish where we're at and what we're going to be working with. This is a domain controller and we're in a domain called itvideocoach.com uh, or itvideocoach.local actually. This is an internal domain and the one thing we should make very clear is when you're setting up a PKI this is your own internal PKI. Obviously, you're not using something like VeriSign or Thought or somebody like that. So uh, this is for a company uh, that would be setting up an internal CA structure. Maybe they want to issue certificates for you know, email internally, or they want to issue a certificate for their own, their own internal website, or user authentication VPNs, or whatever it may be. Uh, you know, just to make it very clear you know, what we're using this for. So uh, what we're going to do is uh, install a standalone root here on the domain controller. Now in real life we probably wouldn't install on a domain controller but I do have a, a little bit of a limit of hardware I can work with in this particular uh, presentation. So we're just going to go ahead and install the standalone root on this DC. Uh, but in real life we'd probably like to install that standalone root on a box that is a non-domain member, something that we can easily install it on and then easily take offline and lock up in a closet. So uh, just keep that in mind. All right. So the first thing we want to do is think about the different ways we can obtain a certificate. Well, one way to get a certificate would be through a web-based a web -based interface. So the first thing we need to do is install IIS so that we can make sure that we can obtain a certificate uh, through our web server. Okay. And we, we never know uh, when we install CA exactly how we might have to obtain a cert. So it's good to make sure that we have IIS installed and have it available to us. Now on the standalone route, we probably won't really be using uh, the web-based interface a whole lot, but it's good to have it there uh, just in case you need it. So we're going to be installing IIS, and it does require active server pages, so I'm going to add that as an option here. Now keep in mind I'm working on a Windows server 2003 platform and we're installing IIS 6.0 here uh, in this environment. And we can see that the IIS installation has completed so that's easy enough. Just laying down the basic IIS install and it's very important to install IIS first uh, then as you go through the uh, CA install which we're going to do next as we go through that CA install, what we'll see is that it's going to actually stop IIS and then install uh, certificate services for us. And we get a warning here as we go to install uh, certificate services. It says, hey, we just want to warn you that if you ever change the name of the computer that you're installing certificate services on, or if you ever change its domain affiliation, that that definitely has a potential to break your certificate hierarchy. Uh, every certificate that you issue is going to have embedded in that certificate somewhere within that structure the name of the computer that's, that's actually doing the issuing and the domain affiliation of that computer. So when you go to install certificate services, it's very, very important to make sure that whatever box you're going to install it on, that you don't change its name or you don't change its domain affiliation. So it's just warning us about that. And then we're going to be installing both the full-blown certificate services and the web-based enrollment tool. And because of that web-based enrollment tool is why we need IIS installed. 
Now, if you choose to install IIS after the fact, you can still create the website. It's just a lot easier to have IIS installed first, let certificate services install, stop IIS, build the website, and then restart it back up when you're done. Okay, now at this point, we have to choose what type of CA we want to install. Microsoft gives us either an enterprise CA or a standalone CA. And to build the hierarchy that we need, what we really want to do is build a standalone root. And then we can build a enterprise subordinate underneath that. And then once we get it established, we can actually take that standalone root and take it offline and lock it in a closet. And we would do that right after we publish some of our information like our AIA information or our CRL information. So we're going to go ahead at this point and install that standalone root. We'll just call it standalone root. And notice that the validity period for this certificate is five years. It's always a good idea uh, to make note of what that lifetime is going to be. Five years might be too long. It might be too short. Go ahead and change it to whatever you want it to be. Just keep in mind any certificates we issue from within this hierarchy need to be within that five year time period. So always keep that in mind at your lower levels as you install your enterprise sub and then as you actually issue your certificates, you're limited to that five year period. And also keep in mind that when you go to you know, issue a lot of certificates, you can back everything up by doing either a system state backup or an ASR backup for Windows Server 2003. And when you perform those backups, it does indeed back up your certificate database, which is located here and also your log file path and you can change these if you need to. And now we have IIS installed so it is indeed going to stop IIS and it's going to go ahead and install certificate services for us. Alright, the actual installation of certificate services has completed. That wasn't so bad. And we can go in here and take a look at what our root CA looks like. It is that simple to build your PKI infrastructure and the root of your hierarchy. So let's go to the MMC and we'll just go ahead and add the snap in for our standalone root. So we look for certificate authority and we'll add that and we're also going to take a look at the certificate templates. We'll add that and click OK and we'll just save this to our desktop real quick so we have it and we'll just call this one certs and we have that and we'll maximize it up just a little bit and we can see at this point that we have an online standalone root and there's not a whole lot going on now at some point what we're going to see here is uh, during the installation he actually issues to himself a self-signed root certificate so upon the install of your root you get a public key and a private key and then that public key that he assigns to himself is signed by his own private key, which kind of builds this very, very top of your PKI infrastructure. So that's very, very important. Also, this standalone root has a full list of all the templates that he has available to him for issuing certificates. Now, the only drawback uh, to a standalone CA is that the standalone CA, anytime you make a request for a certificate, you have to approve it. And then the requester has to come back and then pull that signed certificate back down. So that makes the standalone server a good candidate to be a root because we don't really get involved in really approving and issuing certificates a whole lot except for that initial trade-off as we build the root and then we build the uh, enterprise subordinate. He also allows us to build other uh, subordinates. For example, I might have a subordinate that issues just web-based certificates or a subordinate that issues just EFS certificates or a subordinate that just issues SMIME certificates. So he does give us that top structure we can work with. We can also look at revoke certificates, issue certificates, pending requests and failed requests. Uh, we can also um, publish revoke certificates and everything that we would do uh, in a CA. All right, so that completes part one. Come back and take a look at part two, and we're going to show you how to build that enterprise sub and actually get that, that uh, PKI hierarchy uh, fully in place. So stay tuned, and we'll see you in part two of creating a PKI infrastructure for Windows Server 2003. We'll see you back in just a minute.